Imagine being able to talk to someone light years away, instantly. There has been a lot of discussion about how quantum entanglement could result in faster than light communication. Sounds great, right? This guy didn't think so. Albert Einstein discovered the speed limit of the universe, the speed of light. He showed that nothing, even information, could go faster than light. If that's true, why do people say that quantum entanglement goes faster than the speed of light? We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Let's introduce a few quantum concepts that are going to make this easier to understand. If I flip a coin, in a classical world, we get either heads or tails. In the quantum world, we get heads and tails. It's as if the coin never stops spinning. We call this a superposition. When an object is in all possible states at once, it's in a superposition. Now, when we measure a superposition, it's like the coin stops spinning. We measure one of the possible outcomes. We call that collapsing the superposition. Observing collapses superposition. An example of this on the quantum scale is the spin of a particle. You can think of the spin of a particle as just being another property that we can measure. Up, down, left, right, heads, tails. In the quantum world, our particle is in a superposition of all possible spins before we measure it. Superposition is weird, but it's not the weirdest thing the quantum world has to offer. Let's talk about quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is a prediction made by the math of quantum mechanics that says that you can entangle two particles so that their properties are always correlated. To give an example of classical entanglement, let's take a look at these two golf balls. One's orange and one's white. I'm going to put them in this bag and I'm going to shake it up. Now without looking, I'm going to take one out. I'm going to put the bag behind my back, and as soon as I look at my golf ball, it's white, I know that the one behind my back is orange, but I didn't have to measure it. And that makes sense, because the colors of the balls are predetermined. This is how Einstein tried to justify quantum entanglement. Einstein was thinking about the spin of two entangled particles. When you measure the spin of a particle, it can either agree or disagree. Now, our two particles are in superposition, meaning that when we measure them, they should have equal probability to either agree or disagree with our measurement. So, if we have two particles, it makes sense that half the time they both should be the same, so they would both agree or both disagree, and half the time one would agree and the other would disagree, or one would disagree and the other would agree. So 50% of the time, our results will be correlated. But that's not quite what the experiments show. The experiments show 100% correlation. That is, when one of the particles agrees, the other one disagrees. When one of the particles disagree, the other agrees. And this is what the mathematics shows. So let's think about this. Two measurements that are supposed to be completely random are somehow entangled so that they're always correlated. That's a little spooky. The way that Einstein explained it is he said there was some hidden variable for the particles so that no matter what direction we measure it in, there was some variable that predetermined the spin. Just like the colors of our golf balls were predetermined, the measurement is predetermined as well. Seems fine, right? Problem solved? Well, John Bell came along, and he devised a test that would show definitively whether there was a hidden variable or not. And experimentalists conducted that test, and it turns out there is no hidden variable. So now we're back to where we were. The only way that we can explain quantum entanglement is with the math of quantum mechanics, which Einstein and many others said that if there was no hidden variable, information must travel faster than the speed of light, so quantum mechanics is incomplete. This is what we call the EPR paradox, and many science fiction writers 
have misinterpreted it as saying that we can have faster than light communication through quantum entanglement. Let's talk about why this isn't the case, what Einstein didn't think about. Here's a device that I built to explain this. What you're looking at is two particles, one on the left and one on the right. The two LEDs inside the particles are just representing the possible outcomes of measuring the particle. Dead or alive, one or zero, red or blue, it doesn't matter. The point is that these two particles are entangled, and we can see this by measuring them. So if we measure just one, we see that the other one is the inverse. And if we had measured it in the opposite, so if the one on the left was blue, then we see the one on the right turns red. So they're entangled. Here's the fun part. In between them, I've put galaxies. So they're light years apart. And yet, they're still correlated. They're still entangled. And we can see that. So if this is true, then how do we explain that information is traveling faster than light? Because obviously, if they're light years apart, and we measure them at exactly the same time, and they're opposite, some information must have traveled faster than light to get here. Or has it? Let's say that we gave one of our entangled particles to Einstein and the other to our fish friend, and we sent them galaxies apart. In this example, the LEDs represent the spin of the particle, whether it agrees or disagrees with the measurement. If Einstein makes a measurement, he knows instantly what the measurement of our fish friend's particle will be. The superposition is collapsed. But here's the key to everything. Our fish friend doesn't know that the spin of his particle is no longer in superposition. Because you can't measure whether a particle's spin is in superposition or not. Because measurement destroys superposition. So there's no way for our fish friend to know that Einstein measured his particle. As far as our fish friend or Einstein can tell, their measurements are just coin flips. The only correlation shows up when they compare their measurements, which they can only do classically. But obviously this classical comparison isn't taking advantage of any spooky quantum effects and it follows the universe's speed limit, the speed of light. Even though Alice and Bob could be measuring at exactly the same time, light years apart, and still have correlated results, there's no information traveling between them. And as a result, we're not violating relativity. It also means though that we can't use quantum entanglement for communication. So unfortunately, looks like science fiction is going to remain fiction at least for now.